Hello everybody, welcome to Countdown to Zero, my name's the Zero Man. Now, on the show, we look at games, we look at three positives at the very least, and three negatives at the very least, and then give it a final score. Today's game we're looking at is Sonic Generations. Now, Sonic Generations is a fairly recent title made by the Sonic team, which works for Sega. And it essentially is kind of a throwback to the, you know, good Sonic games. Uh, essentially before Sonic 06. Yeah, there's a reason they don't mention that game and try to pretend it doesn't exist. But anyway, this game, just, it literally is more than just a throwback, because it takes you back to the original levels of Sonic 1, Sonic 2, Sonic 3 and Knuckles, the Sonic Adventure series, it takes you to Sonic Heroes, Sonic Unleashed, which... I, uh, I, I think that was a rather poor decision on their part. Sonic Unleashed. Yeah, but anyway, as for the good things. First off is the first part of the game. The first half of it, that is. Oh my gosh, seeing HD throwbacks to places like Green Hill Zone, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary and seeing HD remasterings of some of the Dreamcast Sonic games. Oh my gosh, it, I'm not even a Sonic fan. I, I will willingly admit that I'm not a Sonic fan, and that is a nostalgia trip even for me. And I just love Green Hill Zone. I do. And playing that as modern 3D Sonic is a treat in itself. It's just wonderful, and I cannot get past that. Number two, if you like all the Sonic characters, they're all here, with one notable exception. There is no Big the Cat. Thank you, Lord. No Big the Cat, no annoying, giant, dumpy sidekick who just trundles around and looks stupid. Nothing. It's not, he's not there. Hallelujah. But fan favorites make a comeback. You have Knuckles, Sonic, Rouge, Eggman. You even have Shadow, Silver. You have an annoying Chow sidekick, which I find extremely questionable. I would much rather it had been Tails, because at least you expect Tails to be extremely annoying. But th that's beside the point. The fact it's there is a plus to the game. Number three, the game has a fairly wonderful sense of speed. And when I say fairly wonderful, I mean you actually feel it. Sonic feels fast, but doesn't feel overwhelming. There are times where he feels like he's going too fast, where you th kind of can't keep control of him and he goes careening into a wall, but overall he has a very good sense of speed. He builds up speed extremely quickly from a dead stop, and he just feels like a very fluid character without completely just overwhelming your senses, but like I said, there are a few times, just because of level design or the way he handles, that it gets a little bit out of hand, but other than that, they seem to have his speed kind of nailed down, and the inclusion of boost. 3D Sonic and his boost, ugh. It's wonderful. It's wonderful! You can go even faster as Sonic. That's what you need, is Sonic, but faster. I, I love... If you can't tell, I'm a big fan of 3D Sonic. That That's actually number four. 3D Sonic. The 3D environments, the 3D maneuvering, the 3D platforming. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. I, there, there are some questionable things that I can get into, into the bad part, but... As far as 3D Sonic goes, it is wonderful. It's just fantastic. Even the renditions of older levels from the original three Sonic games are, are still good. They're still good. And some of the redos of Sonic Adventures, like running down a skyscraper, just 
flying across the city on a skateboard. That's awesome to do with 3D Sonic in HD. That's freaking wonderful. So, 3D Sonic, part of the game. You get a plus on my watch. Now to the downsides. Number one. I don't know if it was Sonic Team not knowing what they're doing, or Sega being lazy, but oh my god, this game does not like PCs. It hates them. In fact, if you don't configure the game in a certain way, the game will immediately crash on startup. And that's not even the best part. The game, after a few times running on that configuration, will completely screw up to where you have to delete all of the setup files and then redo the configuration tool. Even though the settings never changed, even though you never touched them, it will crash the game and tell you, oh, this configuration setting is wrong. No. Just. No. And on that topic, <clears throat> I know I shouldn't expect Sonic to be playable with a keyboard, so I won't even go into that. The fact that I have to use a controller doesn't bother me, because I have ungodly amounts of controllers sitting around. What bothers me is the fact that it only works with certified Microsoft controllers. Why? Why? If I want to use my Power A, nope, sorry, can't do it. If I want to use a Logitech controller, nope, sorry, can't do it. If I want to use any type of third-party controller, Mad Cats, or like my Power A, or Logitech, or freaking anything, anything, no third-party controllers at all. In fact, if you try to run an emulator, which I wouldn't say you do, it completely breaks the game. Because of input lag. Because of the lag of going through a nice little emulator, it completely breaks the game and platforming sections. In fact, if you watch some of my earlier videos, you can see my pure anger and frustration at using an emulator for my Power A. In fact, I went out and bought a Microsoft Certified Controller, which honestly I should have probably done in the first place, but I went and bought a Certified Microsoft Controller just to use the bloody game properly. No. Just. No. Sonic Team and Sega. No. That's not how you make a PC game. You have full controller support, and you actually let us change the options. Number two, game breaking lag. I have no idea why, but the game at just random points lags unto unholy hell. Just random parts of a level. You'll be running through, and your 60 frames a second all of a sudden tanks do nothing. And in fact, I've read multiple support columns about this, and about the controllers, and about all the problems with this game. And Lord Almighty, there are some people who even crash the game because they get into certain spots. Certain parts of the level just lag them out and completely crash their computers. That is unacceptable. That is unacceptable in a game that's about speed and where you need that 60 frames a second to keep coordination. When you slow down the game, you throw off a person's coordination. That is unacceptable. Especially in a PC game. Especially. We expect better. We have better hardware. It's not like it's a draw in power. Just... Uh, bad programming. Okay. Number three. The second half of the game. The entire half of the game that's essentially from the GameCube era afterwards, where Sega really wasn't a gaming company anymore and just produced and published games. God almighty, I hate it. Not only does it feel lazy, just in the level design, some... yeah, just some of the levels feel completely out of place. They feel like they were designed for an entirely different game. And considering some of the camera issues and just some of the enemy placements, if you can make it through without taking damage, you are a miracle worker. 
If you can make it through some of the platforming spots without falling once, you are a miracle worker. And it just feels lazy to take a bunch of modern titles like Sonic Heroes and Sonic Unleashed and just essentially redo them immediately after in Sonic Generations because these levels were already HD and made and you just essentially moved the assets and you didn't even move them well. That is lazy. Shame on you, Sonic, Sonic Team. The entire second half of the game just feels broken. It really does. The first half of the game, beautiful. Second half of the game, complete and utter garbage. Ah, <sighs> part four. The boss battles, and not all of the boss battles. Some of the boss battles are fine. But my lord, the boss battles where you have to play catch up. No. 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 I understand the point of Sonic is supposed to go fast, but when you're playing catch-up and you legitimately just slowly inching closer to your opponent, you don't feel fast. You don't feel powerful. You feel like you're slowly grinding your way towards your enemy. And if you get hit, God help you, you have to start from the very beginning and slowly grind your way back to where you were. I have to say, one of the most hair-ripping moments is the final boss battle. Just the final boss battle in the game, I won't spoil it for you, go look it up somewhere else. Or just see hints of it in my last video, the grand finale. But, essentially, it's a chase sequence, where you flip back and forth between 2D and 3D. Which is fine, it's fine, Sonic goes fast, Sonic runs, a chase sequence seems kind of, you know, makes sense. But when you seriously cannot catch up to him for like 10 minutes, and me holding down the boost button, me holding down the boost button, the thing that makes Sonic go faster, and I can't catch up to the boss for 10 minutes, 10 that's if I dodge all of the asteroids and attacks and consistent homing missiles. Oh my god. If I have to hear one more character shout, There's a homing missile! I will shoot myself. God. Like the boss battle where you fight the Eggman robot, where you're just kind of bouncing around, it's 3D platforming, and then you go and jump on him and attack his head. Yes, that's good. That's good. Where you're, like, outrunning Shadow and you're fighting off Silver and you're doing... That's awesome. But when you're playing catch-up and you legitimately can't catch up, that's just frustrating and annoying. Completely unfair. <sighs> but that's enough of me ranting about the bad things in the game. It's time for me just to give an overall kind of view on the game. It's good. It is good. Like, commentating it and playing it at the same time, don't do it. Because you need your focus. If you lose your focus in the game, you will kind of get just completely messed Peggy over seven. by the game. But it's fun. It plays like a Sonic game should. It's a nice throwback to the older games, even though the modern ones kind of feel really lazy. Looking at you, Sonic Marathon Devils. But overall, it's a decent game, even though it's really crappy. But if you were looking for a revival of the Sonic series, an actual back to what Sonic was good at, oh, you kind of found it. I would, however, suggest getting it on a console where there's not game-breaking lag, and you don't have to worry about, you know, controllers and the game completely flipping out in the configurations for no apparent reason. So with that, I give the PC version of Sonic Generations a 6 out of 10, which means it's above average. It's it's fun, but it's not 
amazing in any way, it's not grand on any place or whatever. For consoles, I give Sonic Generations a 7, just because of the issues with controllers and configuration and frame rate issues. You don't have any of that in the console versions, which makes the game infinitely better. So, 6 on PC, 7 on consoles. Don't even ask me about handhelds, I have no friggin' clue, and I don't plan to play them on anytime soon. So, anyway guys... That's been my thoughts on Sonic Generations, and until next time, stay beautiful, my people.